Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you to this very somber edition of Radio Biafra special broadcast that should have come to you yesterday, but was delayed until today due to technical difficulties. I thank you for your patience, for your understanding, for your tenacity and your resilience. Because we have embarked on a divine mission which this very generation must accomplish. I welcome each and every one of you. And as I do so, I will no doubt encourage you to also welcome your friends and your family members, your well-wishers, wherever they may be domiciled around the world. This is a presentation that should have come yesterday, but it is coming your way this evening. The time now is approximately four and a half minutes past the top of the hour, 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, irrespective of where you are around the world and unlike any other. Radio Biafra is listened to across the face of this very planet Earth. Radio Biafra is dedicatedly followed by people in over 100 countries around the world. Therefore, this very gospel is being propagated at a rate never seen before. And that is why the zoo will collapse. That is why they are vibrating. That is why the zoo is in a state of panic. And that is why the inevitability of the coming of Biafra can be very confidently predicted. That I can assure you. For Elohim is in charge, Chukuki Kabiyama is in heaven, presiding over the affairs of his children on this very earth. And in all that we do, we give glory to him. For only him is the bringer and the taker of life. We are mere mortals, we cannot question his decisions. In every condition and situation, we find ourselves in, we must give glory and honor to Chukuki Kabiyama Prumi Hanine. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Regardless of where you are, I welcome you to this very special edition of Radio Biafra Live presentation on a day, or should I say, on a day following the announcement of the passing into glory of my mother. Who rested in the Most High, Chukuki Gabiama, on the 30th of August. Our prayer is very simple and very short. May her passing accelerate the restoration of Biafra. Let her death be an end to the wanton brutality and wickedness of the damnable zoological republic soldiers and army on the streets of Biafra land. And also let her death be a reminder to us all of my determination to sacrifice everything sacrificable to ensure the restoration of Biafra. I have said it in the past and I will repeat it live on air because anything we say here is gospel and must definitely come to pass. That I will do everything humanly possible within my powers and by the grace of the Almighty in heaven to ensure that Biafra comes in our time, if anything, 
my beloved, very beautiful, I must say, very beautiful mother, is in heaven watching over our march towards Biafra because that was what she lived for. Very brave and unflinching, very compassionate and determined when it comes to Biafra. For her sake and all those who fell in her compound, Biafra must come and Biafra will come. Before we go any further, we must pray. We must hand over all that we are doing unto the capable hands of the author and the finisher of our faith. The only entity that was never created because Chukwukeka Biyama existed before time began. That is why the ancients say that he is eternal. We must bow in prayer and in complete submission to his will because we are not fickle-minded. We call upon you in your divine mercy and grace upon the lives of those that believe and trust in thee to make this very solemn proclamation that in every situation, in every circumstance that we defer to thee, that it is only you that we have and nobody else, that we shall glorify your holy name from eternity to eternity, because you never end. Heaven and earth may pass away, but your word shall remain. And upon that very promise do we anchor our belief, our faith that Biafra must be restored in our time. I give over to thee all those who have died in the cause of this very noble effort because you told me that we will die. There will be a lot of sacrifice to be made. And I said to thee, my creator, my Lord, my God, and my essence, that every sacrifice you call upon us to make, that we shall make it to ensure that freedom comes in our time. That very sacrifice has been made by my family because the demise of my mother is as a direct consequence of the activities of the Nigerian government and the invading soldiers that came to my house repeatedly looking for who to kill and killing innocent people in the process. Therefore, you will accept this very prayer this evening. For only the Elohim see how they have increased that trouble us. Many rise up against us. Even Facebook and Twitter has come against us. Countries that we do not know rise up against us. Many are saying of our soul that there is no help from anywhere, that Elohim has abandoned us. But you cannot because instead of your word not to come to pass, creation will cease to exist. Only the Elohim is our shield and our guide. You are our glory. You are the lifter up of our hearts. You have sustained us with courage and with conviction when many thought that we would have fallen by the wayside. We have remained resolute, not through any strength of ours, but by thy mercy. We cry unto thee, O Elohim, and you always hear our voice and you answer our prayers. And as your son David said to thee, in good and in bad, we will praise your holy name. That is the message we must send out this very day. That regardless of what we come across, 
regardless of the pain and the suffering, we will always glorify your holy name because only thee knows all. We rise up because you sustain us. We are in the land of the living because only you have decreed it. Job did not question you. We will not question you because you are God. That is why we will not be afraid no matter how many soldiers they send our way. Even though they surround us with their AK-47s and their tanks and their helicopter gunships, Heavenly Father, we remain resolute and very firm in our conviction that the coming of Biafra has been divinely mandated by you in heaven. And there is nothing man can do to stop it. It doesn't matter how many of us die in this process. One thing is inevitable, that Biafra must be restored. Therefore, arise, O Elohim, and come and save your children, because you are our God and our creator. For you have destroyed the enemies, for their plans have fallen to the dust. You have broken them because they are ungodly men. Salvation belongs to thee and only thee alone. And may your blessing be upon this very noble family, IPOB. May your grace dwell amongst Biafra. And may you, Heavenly Father, in accordance with your promise, extricate us from the damnable zoological republic to the glorification of your name. Now and forevermore, we pray. He said, He said, He said, We must proceed very hastily and without hesitation to present this very broadcast this evening. Our modus operandi never changes. We remain as dogged and as determined as ever. It doesn't matter which obstacle we come across, we surmount it. It doesn't matter the type of pain that is being inflicted upon us, we endure it. It doesn't matter what the enemy does, ultimately we triumph. Because we are the children of light, because Elohim have determined that Biafra must come. And that is one thing our people must always have in mind, that Biafra must come. There is no alternative. There will be no compromise. There will be no retreat. There will be no surrender. We continue to march forward relentlessly until the will of God is done upon the lives of his children because that is a promise and it must come to pass in our time the essence of this very broadcast this evening in the holy land of biafra is to bring to the fore what the terrorists have been doing to the lives of biafrans who are unfortunate enough to have been included by Lugard and the acquiescence of Dr. Zikiwe in the damnable zoological republic. These people are hell bent on crippling our commercial centers. They destroy our houses, and people say we lament all the time. And I say to them, We are lamenting. Yes, that is true. We are lamenting. The essence of our lamentation is to place on record and in the conscience of humanity that we are being persecuted, we are being targeted as a race for elimination and eradication. That a time is fast approaching when we shall rise up to confront this very evil in all its ramifications to ensure that the children of light is free to worship Elohim in truth and never honesty in the blessed land of Biafra as decreed from of old. 
I said I will sacrifice everything. And I will do it. I will do it, I assure you. It doesn't matter the cost. Biafra is worth every pain and every anguish because it is the promise of heaven. Now, enemies are coming to destroy us. I heard some people thinking foolishly and very hopelessly, some of them even theorizing that the series of terrorist attacks going on with petrol tankers across Biafra land is somehow an accident. We have asked them questions and they have not been able to answer it. And our question is very simple. If suddenly all those that move volatile liquid and spirit across the length and breadth of Biafra land is somehow afflicted by this brake failure disease, how come the same thing is not obtainable in Kanu and in Kaduna, in Zaria, in Katsina, in Sokoto, and in all other supposedly, or should I say allegedly, densely populated, fully controlled areas of the North? Why is it that only our businesses are being burnt? This evening, I'm trying to, I will endeavor to present a sequence of events that will lead us to inescapably conclude that what is happening to us back in Biafra land is planned, it is orchestrated, is a well marshaled plan to destroy us economically. Complete and total economic emasculation. They started with our seaports and we said nothing. They shut down our factories and we never lamented nor complained. They abandoned our roads. They made sure we had no infrastructure. They denied us space at the table of governance in Nigeria. They did everything. They continue to do everything to show, to prove to us that we do not belong. We are not part of them and can never be. Unfortunately, some of us still cannot see it because we are too blind. We are too blind, we cannot see. My happiness today is that heaven and earth is bearing us witness. And even the international diplomatic community is saying that it is a shock to them that Nigeria is still standing as one country because it has defied every logic and common sense and everything that defines a state or a nation is conspicuously absent in the case of Nigeria. They have come to destroy our economies. They have come to burn down on Isha and Daba. They have come to destroy Newi. They have come to eradicate Asaba. They have come that Igwo Charm may cease to exist. They have moved into Akwaibom. They feel they have conquered Cross River. But they have failed and will continue to fail. I feel sorry for those of us who are aiding and abating this very invasion, conquest, and the forceful occupation of Biafra land by Arewa forces. Before I continue, I must warn everybody that the same thing that some people are today encouraging and part of, I hasten to add, was what Chukwukika Biyama himself said no should not happen 380 years ago. 
anybody supporting they must know this very well the north the area one north they have tried in the past to conquer biafra land and they failed woefully and completely because Chupaki Kabiyama said so anybody aiding or abating them for whatever reason is working against the will of the almighty god in heaven they must bear that in mind some of our people have remained ignorant of this very fact to the point of foolishness that the exploding tankers that you have be it in on the shanewi iwacha Anytime they tell you that Dangote truck has failed to break, it is a terror attack. That is what they have been doing. That is what they will continue to do. Because we keep excusing what is in essence inexcusable. It's a terror attack. Why where we have shops? So the tankers only fail break where you have shops and businesses. Some of you don't understand that border closure, Operation Python Dance 4, this spade, should I say, unrelenting wave of terror attack with petrol tankers. They are all coordinated attack by the presidency of Nigeria, by the Abakiyari led cabal to destroy us as a race. Some of you cannot see it because you're blind. Makawan Chanche Gunine went in a hotel too by uh, Face Me I Face You in, uh, in uh, Nasarawa. Because of that, we are paying a very heavy price. As they occupy us with their private jet, they said a private jet came to pick up some people from Owere. Just to divert our attention, all the attacks, all the attacks going on in Biafra land with petrol tankers and uh, Dangote lorries. We are all timed. After hitting and destroying on each other, the commercial nerve of West Africa, not just of the East. What did they do? They said, oh, we are sending an aircraft to worry. So some of you will foolishly abandon or lose sight of the fact that you are being destroyed as a race and start talking about nonsense. Presidential jet to fly people to Abuja to for a 10 billion naira pledge. Eh? 10 billion naira pledge. The same way they promised you second Niger Bridge, you're going to clean up and all the nonsense associated with it. That none came to fruition. So because of all common 10 billion naira, they sent an aircraft, they said it's a um, presidential jet. And our people, our fathers, some of them, I won't call them fathers anyway, foolishly climbed into the aircraft to go to the north to be promised 10 billion to rehabilitate Enugu Airport. And I'm asking them, the time they rehabilitated Kaduna Airport in preparation for the closure and upgrade of Abuja International Airport, did they invite the governor of Kaduna State and all northern governors to come to Asorok? It's a very simple question that they can't answer. When it comes to every minor thing, or should I say, every meaningless gesture is magnified out of all proportion to give the impression that they care, using it to divert your attention away from the terrorist attacks in our land. None of you talks about Ebony anymore, but we are there fighting every blessed day. I repeat, we are on the ground in Ebony, making sure that Biafra land is safe, pouring every resource we have millions upon millions of naira into a bony to ensure that a bony is secured ipob is doing it worldwide nobody can come out to say that uh, uh, i'm a multi-billionaire we are supporting no this that same ipob you see those miscreants you see those people that you denigrate those people you insult they are the ones making sure that we are holding them in a bony that they cannot come in now i don't know who the foolish one is 
Is it you people with your head in the sky? Deceiving yourselves because you have been promised one stupid position or the other. It is our turn. Because of that, you have let go of your senses. But we are here to remind you of that. All over the world, orchestrated targeting of Biafran business interests is gathering momentum. Do you think we only are under attack in Onesha or in Abba? No, you're mistaken. Our businesses are being burned outside Biafra land in Benin. That was this morning. Our business is burned. The Nigerian government connived with some people in Ghana to go and put our sons and our daughters under pressure in Ghana, doing legitimate business. We all saw what happened in South Africa everywhere. I have seen some apologies for the zoo coming out and talking or saying all manner of nonsense about uh, what our people are doing. And I said to them, you don't know who we are. You don't know who Biafrans are because if you know who we are, you will not be so ignorant as to fall into the trap of spinning the narrative of the enemy. Fulani people have three terrorist groups. Three, 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 three. You don't have a Fulani man coming out or making an audio tape saying we are so bad, we are Fulani, we are all terrorists. Never. They have three. They have ISWA, that is ISIS in West Africa. In fact, they have four. Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, ISIS in West Africa, they have Boko Haram, and they have Fulani headsmen. They boast of four terrorist groups, four Fulani. But some of you wake up in the morning and think about or even consider or accept that uh, despite their lack of education, despite the fact that they have made a mess of every opportunity given to them to run Nigeria, that they should be considered for high office. That is how people reason. Because they are backward. People reason like, like animals in the bush. That is why I call the place a zoo. They can't reason very well. They keep saying that power should stay with them or reside with them. And I keep asking, what have you done to show that you deserve to be in high office? Those of them from the North. Show us one simple example. All they succeed in doing is bringing a far more sophisticated form of feudalism. They fused it with our ignorant democratic ideals and here you have a hybrid of what is in essence chaos. That's what you have. What we find most appalling is that our people, especially those who claim they know, are ignorant of all these facts. They will go to newspapers tomorrow and write and talk, hey, we are moving forward. It's our turn 2029. It's our turn 2036. The same old rubbish. The same old nonsense. Every four years, they recycle the same rubbish. Every four years, the same mantra. Over and over and over and over again and nothing is happening. Our land is being laid to waste. Ebony is under siege. It seems to me that the anger of the almighty Elohim is upon our people. I wouldn't want to believe that, but that is what it appears to me. I am not unduly concerned about the threats from the core Arewa North. I'm not. In their quest to eliminate us as a race, I am appalled at the appalled at the appalled at the.